Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at adding fonts to your Mac. So, when you want to add fonts to your Mac, the first thing is where do you get the fonts? Well, there are many different places. Fonts, like images and other content, are copyrighted. So, you want to make sure you obtain it from a legal source. Just because you're publishing something that's not for profit or maybe it's educational, it doesn't make any difference. You need to make sure you get them legally. And there are plenty of places to do that pretty cheaply. For instance, online you can buy CD ROM sets uh, of fonts pretty cheaply. If you search Amazon, you can find all these different sets that you can buy. Uh, you can also go and look in the Mac App Store. In the Mac App Store, there are a ton of different fonts things. You can just search for fonts and you can download them and then basically there are little apps you run that can then install fonts or uh, export the font file for you to install on your computer. In addition to that, a lot of clip art collections online and collections that are specifically for fonts uh, are available. Uh, clipart.com, for instance, which I have a subscription to, has a set of fonts and I can search through it and download a font that I want. And as I said, there's other sites out there that specialize in just fonts and you can purchase a font that you want or get a subscription where you can download the f fonts from that site. Now today fonts are all cross platform. They should all work on Mac and Windows machines. There shouldn't be any real difference between them. Back 10, 15 years ago that wasn't exactly true and a lot of sites and a lot of collections are still, still specific to Mac or Windows. And in cases where they offer both you of course want to go and make sure you download the Mac version just to make things a little easier for you. Usually the way they're compressed or the way they're delivered to you might be specific or a little easier for Mac users. Um, so in this case I can download this is a true type font. It's cross platform. I could probably uh, install this Windows. Uh, version as well as the Mac one. They're probably identical except the Windows one comes in a zip archive and the Mac one comes in a stuff it archive, a kind of an old format um, which you can decompress. I'm going to download this font and use it. So whichever way you download it you're going to end up with a font file. In this case here's the file I downloaded and I expanded it so that this is the file I get inside of a folder. Uh, you may actually end up with this at the beginning. You may end up with a zip file that you decompress. Uh, it doesn't matter. You end up with this font file when this, it, which in this case it says it's a font suitcase. It may say it's a true type font. It may say uh, several other different things. But in order to install it all you need to do is double click it and it's going to run FontBook which is an app that's pre-installed on your Mac and it shows you all the fonts that you've got. When you double click it it's going to open FontBook. It's going to show you the font. Uh, you can see the font variations. In this case there's only one, just the regular. Sometimes there's bold, italic, things like that. And you can click the Install Font button. So inside a font book I can look at a list of all my fonts. Make sure you select the correct thing on the side here. So I selected all fonts so I can look to see what's there. You can also have fonts that are installed for all users on your computer or just the current user. So in this case I installed this font just for this current user and it won't be available to other users on this computer, other accounts that is. Uh, so all fonts I can look through it. I can find the font that I just installed which I noticed was called Elephant when I installed it because the font name and the file name don't necessarily have to match. So this is the official name for the font that was inside of that file. And I can see a preview of it here. Now I could delete this font here if I want as well by simply selecting it hitting the delete key. A note about deleting fonts is you should only really ever delete a font that you installed just like I installed this one. Otherwise the font is either installed by the operating system so it's used by the system in some way or was installed by an app that you installed. And you may not recognize it but it may be used by an app and if you delete it then the app won't work correctly anymore. Fonts take up very little space so don't worry about this getting too full or taking up too much space in your hard drive. All these fonts I have take up a tiny bit of space, probably the equivalent of a really tiny video or short audio file. So don't worry about that. So here I am now inside of Pages and I've selected some text and I can now find that font here in the list. There it is. Select it and now I can use it inside of this text field. So here's a quick look at how to find and install new fonts on your Mac. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. If you found this video useful, there's one thing you can do for me in return. It won't cost you anything and it'll just take you a few seconds. If you're not already at MacMost.com, go there and then look for the video you just watched and go to that page. Underneath the video you'll see a bunch of different links that help you share the video with friends. Take a second to click the like button. This sends a signal out to the rest of the internet that the video is worth watching. Thanks.